Hey everybody, it is Sunday, August 21st right now. I'm kind of just been out. It's been raining off and on this whole weekend. Of course, it did say it was going to be raining all weekend, so the fact that it's only been on and off hasn't been too bad. Uh, this is just going to be a quick update, and I am going to do something. First of all, I got a Wi-Fi extender that goes on the whole property. I keep forgetting to put it in there, but it's been working really nice. And uh, something else was uh, I was going to show real quick the... Uh, after I sprayed the uh, crabgrass, it's already starting to take effect right now. And then also, I'm going to kill these empress trees, these royal empress trees, because they're they're all in the way of something, and they're way too invasive. Like, they spread really fast. I'm just, I'm tired of it. Um, everything else is relative. All the other trees are relatively, say, well-behaved. But the royal empress trees, they're just, they're way too invasive. They just take off, and you just can't keep control of them. Uh, I'm out by the tiny house right now, so... Um, I'm going to get started. I'm going to show you how to kill these uh, Royal Empress trees as well. It's, I mean, obviously cutting them down. That's a real easy thing to do. There's a way to kill them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill them first, let them wilt down because although they're trees, they're kind of soft too. It's really weird. And uh, then after that, because I have one that's like 70 feet on the front of the property that I'm going to end up killing. And uh, so that's the the problem is they just they spread too much they're in the way of the starling satellite when we get ready to have that and the ones out front are in the way where i'm going to put apple trees and pear trees and all that good stuff so it's coming out all the trees are coming out i'm going to get started on it so here we go so first thing i'm over here tiny house is right here and uh one thing i keep forgetting to tell you about is this wireless router it gets gets a signal it's a repeater it gets a signal from inside uh and then, so I'm on the second story, and I mounted it right up here. And it's called Wavelink, W-A-V-L-I-N-K. And uh, so what it does is it's really good. It's, it's, it has a one watt uh, antenna on it, which doesn't sound like it's very much, but anybody that knows about shortwave radios, one watt's actually pretty damn, uh, a, a pretty robust signal. And so now, I mean, that little thing, now I can go pretty much anywhere on the property and have good Wi-Fi. Like, so I'm out here, and you can see the, uh, the far fence all the way there through the pergola, all the way far front fence. I have good signal up there all the way to the road. So my neighbors are probably seeing my Wi-Fi signal now. And then I can go all the way down by the fig tree all the way on the back part of the property. And I still have, you know, really good signal. And obviously everything inside the tiny house here is getting a really good signal. So... It's working really nice, that's for number one. Now for number two, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you just a little bit of the crabgrass situation here. Now this crabgrass, if you can start seeing it, now this is one type. And if you can see now, it's a little bit lighter in color already. Starting to turn white, starting to turn white. All this stuff is starting to turn white right here. So that'll that's what'll happen, it'll start turning white. And once it starts turning white, this stuff, it starts curling. Well, you can kind of see it here. This is some other stuff. This is some clover. Uh, it's already starting to turn kind of lime green. And this was the uh, this was another type of crabgrass right here. And as you notice, it's already starting to turn brown in there. And uh, and it's not hardly growing anymore at all. So, it, so it's doing its job. It'll take it a little while. Let's come around here, actually. There was some more right around in here. I don't even know if I can find it. Yeah, you can see it. A little bit, a little bit of this white's already starting to bleach out. Same way right there. That's some more of it starting to turn white. So it's already turning. Once it starts turning white, it'll start growing really, really slow. And then it'll start kind of turning brown because it just, it can't do photosynthesis. And if it can't, and you know, that's how it gets food. And if it can't get food from the sun, then it's not going to, it's just a matter of time before it starves to death. So, and that was one type of crabgrass. That's the southern or the smooth i forget which type now and then over in here you can start seeing some of the white you see those white all, the, all over the place that's the other type of crabgrass here all these really spindly ones like this that's all crabgrass and you see how it's starting to turn white there's still some green to it but it'll keep turning white over the next couple weeks and it'll it'll get to the point where it just won't won't grow anymore and it'll all go away and this over here is all the centipede grass still kind of thin but it's growing in together. We have to get this crabgrass out of there. And so here's what the lawn actually looks like. It keeps growing in more and more. Obviously there's still a lot of open spots, but for the most part, it's starting to grow in pretty nicely. So 
it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is good. I knew it would, it just takes a little bit of time. And this is how I get all the crabgrass out of the lawn. And I have a pre-emergent that I'm gonna put on there uh, early next spring. And that pre-emergent will finish the job. Anything that does come up will only come up, will only germinate. And then after it germinates, it'll just die within, you know, a few days. So, so what we're coming over to, like I said, these are Bradford pears, that guy right there. And then there's a row of them behind this one, this one right here, this one right here is the Royal Empress trees. And there's a row of Bradford. First of all, they're way too close to the fence. They're only six feet away from the fence. And that fence was already here when I was here. And if you can see what happens every couple of years, and it happened earlier this year, the electric company has to come by and cut all these trees. And I don't like that. I don't know why they planted them so close to the fence here. But the good thing about that is that makes these trees really heavy on this side. So they should all fall right out here in the yard and I'm probably gonna mar up the yard. And I don't really like that, but it's better than, uh, it's the only way I have to do it. So this whole line's gonna come out probably in the next few months. I'll give them a couple months. Uh, I need to get some tree felling equipment and stump felling or stump pulling equipment. So this is that Royal Empress tree. It has these big leaves like this. And these are big and wide, you know, like the span of my hand wide. And it drops them constantly all over the yard. This isn't too bad because I just ran over it with a mower, but I ran over it with a mower like an hour ago and it's already dropping these guys again. And they drop nuts. Can you see them? Like, I don't see any. You can kind of see some right there. And they get to be nuts about the size of a golf ball and just drops them all over the place. And then they spread just horrendously. I really don't like it. So what we're gonna do here though, so we're gonna come about three feet up, about right here. And we're just gonna start drilling in. Drilling in about three inches deep, all the way around the circumference of the tree. And what we're gonna do is after we drill in, then I have uh, the 41% glyphosate, Roundup basically, and I'm going to inject it into all these holes that I drill into the stump here, but uh, not the stump, the tree trunk, about three feet off the ground. And then I'm gonna wait an hour and then do it again, wait an hour and do it again. And that should be enough. They said over the course of a couple of months, it's gonna kill everything. So all the leaves will, it's gonna start raining leaves and everything is going to start drooping on this. And hopefully it'll make it a little bit shorter before I go to pull it down. And what my idea is, and I'm gonna do videos of this also, is I'm gonna use a block and tackle along with a winch, tie it around there and instead of felling it like normal, I'm going to anchor it probably to this tree right here. Or I might have to cut this one down first and then to pull the stump out, I'll use this tree as an anchor point. And actually that's about the only tree and then maybe my tractor for the other anchor point. And then we'll actually use it to pull the stump up and that's what we're gonna do for all of these because the Bradford pears behind that, I'm gonna do the same thing for all those. So that way, yeah. Yeah, block and tackle. It's just a, a system of pulleys. And with eight pulleys, I can get a 16 to one pulling advantage. And if I get, for example, an eight ton winch, well then that makes it, uh, what would that be, 48, 128,000 pounds of force, which is way more than required. You only need about, uh, what, 15 to 17,000 uh, pounds of torque or of uh, force to be able to pull stumps out, obviously depending on the size of the stump. But then once I get over here to these, Bradford and that Bradford that's going to be a stump then I'm just going to use this tree right here that's a nice big uh, I'm not sure what it is but that's a nice big tree and or I could use that one over there not the Japanese maple here but that guy over there so anyway I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill that in and start feeding it uh, glyphosate and that should work actually I'll show you where the other ones are well the other ones you guys saw before it was uh the one over and we're just walking back right now and we're already starting to lose leaves off of this tree again i don't know what type of tree this is but we're in august it's still 90 degrees and it says nope i don't care i'm gonna dro start dropping leaves and, all right walk right through here i said this video was gonna be a little bit shorter i lied we're already eight minutes over eight minutes so that's all right gives everybody something to do gives me something to do but well, we're gonna kill these trees though. 
the herbicide way, and that's what I'm gonna use there. Just the drill, drill in about three inches, it said two to three inches, and the 41% glyphosate. And the other one, so right here is the tiny house, and probably right on this peak, right here is where the Starlink satellite's gonna be, because these trees actually aren't that tall right here but those are right in the way. And those are the other, it's a cluster of four empress trees right there. And uh, so I'm gonna drill into all those guys too. And they're all gonna start, you know, just being, just drooping over. And you see, we have that other tree, if you look back behind that I can anchor to, to actually pull the stumps out. And that's about the only tree I have over here. I guess I could use one of these over here, but those are just pine. And I don't wanna use pine as an anchor tree. I'd rather use that guy back there behind these empress trees as an anchor point. And it should work just fine because these apparently, although they have a very massive root structure, they're very, they're very superficial, like very shallow and they break very easily. So I'm not anticipating a huge problem, especially if I'm running, you know, eight pulleys with the, you know, four pulleys and then a compound into a compound four set of pulleys again. Uh, I'm not anticipating any problems. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start drilling in and throwing some uh, glyphosate in. All right, so I got done. What I did is I drilled um, two to three inches deep. Actually, it's like three inches deep, about three feet up from the bottom uh, every couple of inches. Now, the one thing is nobody really said how deep or how big a bit to use. So what I used, I used a three eighths inch bit and I just bored holes, uh, as you can see, all the way around here and then just injected some of that 41% glyphosate all the way in. I did it to all the trees, all five trees, uh, empress trees on the property. So uh, I did that once and then, and they said to, and when I say they, I was just reading this online. Um, they didn't say how big, how wide to do it. So I'm like, mm, how big, three eighths of an inch. So what I might do is if I don't see any difference in about three weeks or so, what I'm going to do is um, I'll do one inch, like a one inch paddle bit. And so that way it can hold more, um, more of the glyphosate. Uh, so I did do that. And what it did say is to fill them up, wait about an hour for it to absorb and then do it again, uh, fill it back up again. So I'm going to do that. And I'm hoping that it'll be enough. And these trees are very, cause I've hit the leaves before with this, uh, with glyphosate and it kills like, like hitting just a one, one leaf will kill a whole branch. So I'm hoping by putting it directly in the trunk like this, it will go ahead and, you know, just completely kill the whole thing. I, I think there's a good shot of it. We'll find out. If not, I'll drill the holes out a little bit bigger and put a little bit more in. Um, but anyway, that's it for today, August 21st. And my folks are actually driving down from Iowa today. So they'll be here, oh, in the next couple hours or so. So I hope everybody has a good week and I will see you next time. And bye.